do you want a beer? And I was like, Dad, you know I don't drink. And it's been 18 months, you know my journey. He goes, no, I'm just testing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, loads of friends. Yeah? Not everyone's your friend. Okay, we learn that as you get older. Our management said to us, don't read anything on social media. I'm not nervous about what I do. I have faith in what I do. I'm confident in what I do. I have belief in what I do. What I do get nervous about is when there's no consequence, you do what the hell you like. You get away with whatever you want. Quite mad, you know, in a really bad space where I was suicidal thoughts were in my head. You know, like this time, it was my third time that I was I was knocking it all on the head. But this time I did it for, for me. The first thing I say is don't, don't be too hard on yourself. I'm 18 months sober, but this, like what we're doing now, yeah. is we need to talk about these things Absolutely. more openly on social media so people exactly. start seeing this. Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Ratan. And I'm Nisha Vasani. Welcome to our Taboo Table Talks, where we uncover controversial topics in a modern world. And it's time to question the status quo. So I'm really excited as we've got a very, very special guest who's very, very dear to my heart. And you guys all know him as well. The Punjabi sensational rock star, Juggy D, who is super excited to have here with us. Um, he has been in the industry for 21 years as a successful Punjabi artist. And he has worked with amazing celebrities and other musical artists from around the world like Timbaland, Mary J. Bly, Craig David and Jay Sean, to name a few. Juggy, welcome to our podcast. Thank you. Thank Boot you for having me. Talks. Namaskar, salam, sasrikal, hello. So lovely to have you thank here. You, thank Obviously, you. Obviously, we have known each other for the past for, decade. Um, I think two. <laughs> yeah, since, literally. Since the beginning, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah from yeah, the start of, obviously, my career yeah, in the industry. Yeah. And you it's been and a long just time. been flourishing. Thank you. To, from strength to strength, <clears throat> like 21 years 21 in the industry. Years, Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. That's thank huge you. and what an accomplishment. Thank you very obviously much. Obviously, you were the, one you. of the first Punjabi artists mm. album to launch in the national UK charts. Yes, that was huge. It was. It was. That must and have been a did, huge career highlight. We did. I'm sure we did a. We did. A, we did my first store signing in HMV Uxbridge. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. Um, here. Right, here. <laughs> right here. And I was. I was really scared because I didn't know if people were going to turn up. Yeah. You know, and it was off the back of doing um, store signings with Rishi and Jay, and when you've got people with you you kind of share the load, yes. right? And um, um, you kind of think, okay, well, it'll, it'll be all right because, you know, there's, there's, there's we're all together. There's enough pull between us. There's enough yeah. pull between us. But when you do something solo and you're doing it for the first time, it's always a bit of a, not, I wouldn't say it's a risk, but it's always a little bit nerve wracking. And it makes you think, um, you know, all of the negatives and think, will this go right? Will that go yeah. right? Will people even turn up? Am I doing this for, you know, is it going to be okay? And it was. It was fine. We had a great crowd, and we had the the news turned up, and it was it was amazing. And uh, it was yeah, twenty years ago, and um, here we are still today, and you know, still being invited to uh, to be talked about, which is um, which is a great thing. Wow. Okay. So, I think for, for us, I mean, we've seen your journey for for. 21 years now which is unbelievable mm, thank you um and you're still one of the most talked about Punjabi singers in in London mm. did it ever did it has it always did the nerves ever reduce did you so the nerves you felt initially about am I good enough are people going to turn up do you still feel the same thing today so the, the nerves I have um just taking that yeah. sentence yeah. on board and using that as an, an example I'm not nervous about what I do okay. I have faith in what I do, yeah. I'm confident in what I do, I have belief in what I do. What I do get nervous about is stepping on stage. And I still get that now. Even doing like um, interviews and stuff, I get nerves. Like I got nerves when I first stepped in here. But they're good nerves. Yeah. I look at them as good nerves because I think when you're overconfident, that's when you kind of start losing things a little bit, you know, um, and it shows maybe in a little bit of arrogance or a bit of ego and stuff like that. And I was always taught from the beginning is stay humble, keep your head down and just focus on your work and believe in what you do and the rest will follow, you know, and that's why. And I truly believe why I'm still around 21 years later, because I've seen people come and go, um, have short careers um, and I um, have been guided well. You know, I was around good people as we were, you know, coming through um, in our early years. I was taught some very key things about how to carry yourself as an artist. Um, and that's why I believe I'm still around now. Because I. What are those key things I'm talking about? So, those, those key things yeah. are, like I, which I touched on, is, is, is stay humble. Keep your head down and stay focused on what you're doing rather than what's going on outside. Yeah. Don't focus on what's happening outside because there's always going to be people trying to pull you down, mm. give you negative feedback, give you 
feedback's great and constructive criticism is great. But when you get negative people that have nothing good to say can have a bad effect on your general well-being, yeah. right? And your work. So that is key. And when we were um, coming up um, in the early stages, our management said to us, don't read anything on social media. Yeah. Just don't read it. Yeah, and it's very nice. difficult to do that in this day and age because I'm talking about a, a, an era when there was hardly any social media. You know, mm -hmm. I come from um, a time where we didn't have Instagram. We didn't have much of YouTube. There was no spot, uh, um, Snapchat or TikTok. Mm -hmm. We went viral through word of mouth. And that's powerful. You so know? powerful. I think it's that, part of the reason you're still so successful today. As well as, well as yes. For that. yes. It's not absolutely. a flash in the pan. No. So how on earth do you stay humble when you have fans chanting your name and screaming mm. your name and everywhere you go people know you wherever you are in the world how who someone must have at some point at some point you know do, must have got your head and someone must have said you know like come back down to earth did this ever happen or were you always quite grounded you know what i think we've always been quite grounded and and it's never we've done it for fun we've got oh let's go soak up some love right <laughs> <laughs> and let's let's go to the broadway and we did that for fun yeah because we knew we could yeah. right so maybe if you want to look at that as a little bit of like it's getting to the head of it yeah. but we never did it okay on you know like a uh on a grand scale right. we did it as banter between ourselves, yeah. just me and Jay in the yeah, car, yeah. like driving home from the studio going, should we just drive through the Broadway, see if anyone recognises us, <laughs> you know? It was that kind of and banter. And they did recognise you. And we did, we did get recognised and it was nice. And it's like, now I go to places and, um, and you know, I, I'll finish a show and the security will be there and pushing people away and, and I'll say, no, stop, stop. Let them come through, let them have a picture because it's because of them that we're here. Yes, if yeah. I'm here putting on a show, I'm putting it on for them. Yeah. They've come here to watch me, and if I can't take out a second to take a picture with them, yeah. then that's horrible. Yes. What kind of an artist am I then? They're, they're not gonna. They're not gonna look up to me like, oh wow, you know, we came to watch him, and then he couldn't even do a picture with us. Yeah. Totally. What a s right? Yeah. Um. So, you know, um, I think that nowadays with social media, people have become a lot bigger than they actually are yeah. mm. because they're focused on numbers which not always are genuine um, and where we have come from is a very um, very hardcore graft mm. where we had to kind of work hard to get ourselves out there we started from from the ground level and worked our way through and I think that's what keeps you humble okay you know that keeps you grounded because you know how much work and effort you put in to get there yeah you know and then when I go to places now like I was in Ireland over the weekend and uh I mean, the guy was like um you know we've got um, a room set up for a meet and greet afterwards are you okay with that I said yeah of course and I stayed and I I'd made sure I took pictures with every single person in that room yeah. and the feedback I've had from that even now the guy like um I don't know if you any of you follow my um my stories or anything like that but the guy wrote one thing on there which was so beautiful he said, I called this guy down as an artist and as a promoter, and he's leaving here today as a brother, oh, right? And that was one day of being there with him. And I've left, we've, we've bonded together, and he's working with me now wow. on different things. And, and that's the power of staying humble, yes. Absolutely. you know? And it's not like I go out of my way to do it. It's just the way I've been, like, been kind of moulded into this type of art. And I can vouch for that, because I've known you professionally yeah. and personally, yeah. and he is one of the most humble artists yeah. ever. And that's Thank why Thank I you. wanted, I said, Divini, I wanted you on here, mm. on one. this podcast, number as one our person. number one episode. <laughs> Thank you. Because it's, he's so relatable, yeah. so approachable, he's a friend, yeah. and he's just really open, he speaks yeah. honestly from his heart, yeah. so, yeah. you know, I can absolutely vouch for mm. that, and this is why we've always stayed so close. Mm. But you have, I mean, talking of Jay Sean and the journey you've been on, obviously, with 2.9 Records. It was amazing, obviously, working with Rishi, yeah. Jay Sean, Veronica at the time. You know, what was that like, you know, having someone, obviously having such a close unit, like you said, grafting Family. from down yeah. all the way up, and mm. I've seen you guys all evolve, yeah. and I know you're still close till this very day. Very close, very close, like, You yeah. stay in touch with Jay, even yeah. though he's, like, in America now. Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we, What was our whole relationship like with you guys? We talk to each other all the time, and we still talk to each other like we did 20 years ago. Yeah. It's the same, and we sometimes now talk to each other and go, when, are, when is this ever going to stop? The way we talk to each other. Okay. Like we talk to each other like kids. Yeah. And we've got kids, right? <laughs> and it's like, it's so bizarre because if somebody heard our conversation, yeah. they'd be like, oh my God. 
What are they? And we used to have these conversations between us going, do you think Dre and Eminem talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> do you think they have banter like this? Like, yeah. And they probably do. They yeah, probably because do. Because we're all normal. Yeah. We're all normal human beings. And it's yeah. like, a lot of people sometimes, like, they'll see you and they'll go, oh, buddy, what are you doing here? Hmm. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, yeah. like, why are you here? I'm like, I'm, I've come to get some food. Like, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, and then I stopped them and I said, listen, I said, you've got two hands, you've got two feet. I goes, I've got exactly the same thing. We just do something different. Mm. I said, but we're human beings. First yeah. and foremost, we're human. Mm. Right? I said, so just as I'm here, you're here. I said, we're here for the same reasons. Yeah. I said, we just do different things. Yeah. And they, and, and, and that's what it's about, man. It's like, just, just connect. That's the way you connect with people. And that's the way you leave a, a, a long-term mark in their mind. And that's why, you know, I'm still here now. And that's why people, promoters are still booking me. And uh, I, I, I have long spans of time without any music, without any fresh material. But my bookings never stop. My bookings never stop because when I go to somewhere um, as, a, as an artist, I make a relationship with a first-time promoter or I have a long-term relationship with that promoter and I keep getting repeat business because the first person or one of the first people that will come into their mind when they want to do a show is this book journey. Because I put my heart and soul into my performance and I'm easy to get on with. Yeah. And I don't make their life difficult because they're putting money in my pocket and they're giving me work that puts food on my kids' table, you know? So if you destroy a bond or give it large and ego with your promoters, then I, I'm sorry, but you're in the wrong business. Mm -hmm. You're in a business to build and grow. You need those people to grow. And, and sometimes now I hear stories about artists that come with a chip on their shoulder. Oh, I want this, I want that. Mate, you've got a short-term lifespan. Trust me, you will be here today and gone tomorrow because that ego is not going anywhere with those promoters. They'll book another artist the next time and you'll be gone to the back of the list. So if you want to stay at the top of that list, you need to stay humble and, and, and work with these people because the first person that should come into that guy's mind is you. And how do you do that? Is by staying humble and staying connected to the fans, to the people that book you. And that's, that's business. And that goes in any industry, not just my industry. It goes in any industry. And that's how we get, you know, growth. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, so listening to you, I just feel like it, from the outside, you would look at, as, as at celebrities. They look, they're a little bit like godlike figures, you know, because like you say, we don't associate you with being a normal human being, going to the normal chippy and buying food like normal mm. people. Mm. Um, because we see you on stage. We see you yeah. as raised <clears throat> higher than us. People we put you on a pedestal, don't they? You literally yeah. are on a pedestal. Yeah. And so... I guess the question is, how, number one, how do you deal with the, the pressure of never making a mistake? Because we are all fallible and yeah. we all make mistakes, mm -hmm. every single one of us. Yeah. Number two is you now, if you make a mistake, you are now in an era of social media. Mm. Yes. So it's not just your family might disassociate with you. Mm. It's not just that your tribe may pull away from you. Millions of people in one second may well cancel you for any mistake that you have ever made. Absolutely. We've all made embarrassing mistakes. Yes. We've all done things that we wish we hadn't, mm. you know, and how do you deal with that pressure? Well, look, um, everybody, like you said, we all go through ups and downs in our careers, in our lives of personal and professional. Um, and I've been through that. Um, I've been through things in my personal life which people still don't know about that I've had to deal with myself which I don't publicly talk about the way I deal with things now is much better than it was 20 years ago because of my age you know I've seen a lot I've done a lot and I've got a lot of experience um, and I think um, you you get wiser as you get older as well you know I, I don't party anymore uh, but I was you know the, the name Punjabi rock star doesn't just come from anywhere right you know I, I lived a rock star lifestyle you know and I'm you know there's some things that I'm not proud of and there's some things that I wouldn't change because I loved it and it made me the person I am today the mistakes I made made me the man I am today you know some things I wish I could have erased out of my life and but if they never happen I now look at those and go well if that didn't happen would I get to where I am right now? Right now, I'm touch wood. I'm so blessed to be in probably the best position in my entire life, of my whole entire life. I am smoke-free, meat-free, alcohol-free. I don't take any mind-altering substances, nothing at all. But I have done, you know, and I'm not going to deny the fact that I haven't. I have, I made mistakes, and it's all part of everybody's life. Everybody does different things, right? Now, how do you come away from that? How do you deal with that? Only each individual can tell you their own personal story. 
However, my story will hopefully one day be somebody else's survival guide because I've been through um, some very dark places and I'm um, now in a posi position where I'm about to release brand new music. I'm starting my own YouTube channel. It's ready. Um, I'm releasing everything and holding on to all the rights myself. Like I said, I'm on a, I'm 18 months sober. Um, I'm that's helping. Huge. Thank huge. you. That, that is, is that so is. Bad, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so, very so much. Um, and you know, all of that has come from the things that have happened to me over the years. And I've been trying to get to where I am for probably at least 10 years. But if you could go back to your younger self and say, Juggy, listen, X, Y, and Z, these are things to be, I know why you're doing this, but don't for these reasons. Is there anything you could have said to your younger self? When there's no consequence, you do what the hell you like. You get away with whatever you want mm. because you've got no one to answer to. It's only when they become, uh, you know, you, when you have more to deal with, when you've got more on your plate. If it's just you on that plate, you do whatever you want. Mm. You can live Punjabi yeah. rock star lifestyle Absolutely. For, forever. But when you've got kids, a wife, your family's there. All right, obviously we have our parents that we have to answer to, but parents are, are kind of equipped with knowing that, listen, my kid's going to go through this. I've just got to be a parent and, and guide them through it. My parents have been brilliant, you know. When I was younger, I wasn't able to talk about, you know, like even, even the word smoking was a taboo subject, yes. right? Now I'm telling my dad, yeah, I haven't smoked for this many. Like, I'm a Punjabi kid from a Punjabi family, from a quite a strict Punjabi family. But my, like, my dad will now, sometimes I'll go to the, my, my dad's house, mum and dad's, and then he'll go, do you want a beer? And I was like, dad, you know I don't drink. And it's been 18 months. You know my journey. He goes, no, I'm just testing you. <laughs> I'm like, I am like, I'm like, well, listen, Is I'm he not having gonna... a beer, by the way, at the yeah, same time? Yeah. Yeah. But look, he has control. He has, uh, like in Punjabi, we call it hisab, mm -hmm. right? Hisab. If you know how to do things in, in moderation, in English, we call it moderation. See, I was an always have, have been an all or nothing guy, okay? You couldn't phone me up and say, let's go for a beer. A beer doesn't happen, okay. right? I can't have a beer. What happens after one after, beer? Uh, after one beer, I'm, I'm on full party mode. Let's go. <laughs> let's have it. Like properly. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go. We're, we're on. Wow. We're going out. We're going out, out. Okay. You know, all night. It's party all on. Night. Yeah. And Why? then, you know, as time goes on, I couldn't, I'm not that guy that could do that. And it took me a long time to learn. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it was okay. Like I said, there was no responsibility. There's no consequences, right? So if, if my life had no consequences, I'd still be doing that now, mm. right? But is that, would that be, in, would that have been good for me? No. So at that time, did you have like your other rock star friends living the same lifestyle as yeah. you? But but realizing because for most people, Jackie will have one. Some drink. of them still are. So yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, hundred yeah. percent. But did your ones who had your back and yeah. were your friends and they wanted the best for you? Would they've gone, Jackie? It's not normal to have one drink and go. Let's go out, out. Like most people have one drink and it's like <laughs> let's go in, in. Like yeah. <laughs> no, see, they try and entice you. Yeah, yeah. no, no. See, yeah. the thing is, being in the music industry and, and and getting on with everybody, you have so many friend circles. Of course. So one would finish, they'd all go home, and I go right. Who else is about? Yeah. Oh, where are you at? Okay, I'm coming there. Okay. That's the after party. That's the after party. Then somebody else. And it was like, now I have hardly any. I've got a handful. Of, you know, like when you're yeah. a kid and your dad says you can count your friends on one hand. And you say, yeah, yeah, whatever, dad. I've got loads of friends. Yeah. yeah. Not everyone's your friend. Yeah. Okay. We learn that as you get older. And I honestly can count my hand, yeah. friends on one hand now. Um, and most of my friends now are on a very similar path. The ones that I see a lot. Yeah. Don't drink, don't smoke, don't, you know, like, don't do anything. And yeah. they're just... You'd be drawn to each other. Business, yeah, yeah, you'd be drawn to each other. Now, obviously, talking about, obviously, you know, you being in a dark space, and we're talking about <coughs> mental health today, you know, um, government research shows that nearly two-thirds of people, 59% in mm. the UK, of men suffer from depression yeah. and mental health. Yeah. And it's still seen as a taboo topic. Mm. Big and time. And men do yeah. not want to talk about it because it's mm. seen as they're weak. Yep if they are, you know, actually expressing that they're not mm -hmm. okay, and mm -hmm. it's okay not to be okay. Yep. As we realized in the pandemic, I mean, it was so hard for all of us. We're creatives, yep. Yep. gigs came to a hold, mm -hmm. we couldn't go traveling around the world, mm -hmm. um, and you know, doing what we do best, I couldn't create events, you guys, you know, mm -hmm. none of us could do what we wanted to do. Yeah. But I think a lot of people have been suffering from depression mm -hmm. way even before yeah. we face a pandemic. Now, I've seen you in your <laughs> highs, and I've seen you on your lows, and I've mm -hmm. seen you flourish. You know, how did you get yourself out of this dark place that you were once in? Um, do you know what? I, I think um, it's all about mindset. 
It's all about your mindset. Um, and wanting... See, I'm... Uh, for me, it was like... Sometimes you just need to do things uh, for a certain amount of time. Get it out of your system. Um, you know, go into that space. Uh, and then assess... Uh, reset your your mind and go right okay let, let's do this now because when i was in my dark place like every if I, it's easy for people to say oh why don't you just stop you can't snap why don't you just it? do it yeah. i said well if it was that easy don't you mm. think i would have done that mm. right you're in a difficult place and you're in a dark place for a reason mm. because you, you're finding it difficult to come out of it yeah. right but then even that if you set yourself up in your mind mm. that right okay you know what we're going to do this for another week and then it stops Tell yourself. That's how I did it. Really? Yeah. Did I you get that. help as well? Or? Yeah, 100%. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, I did. Of course yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. And it's out there. The help's out there. Yeah. Get it. Go and look for it. Yeah. I, I, you know, it's 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 amazing. It's, it's, it's phenomenal from where I was to what I'm doing now and how my journey has now started to help a lot of people. Uh, and I'm, so um, I, I went to AA, yeah. okay, because... I wasn't an alcoholic, and this is what I want to really point out, and uh, to to a lot of uh, people that are listening. And this is not just aimed at men; this is at women as well. Alcoholics Anonymous is not just for people that drink every day. Okay, Alcoholics Anonymous is for people that have a problem with alcohol. That could be after one drink. Mm-hmm. I had a problem with alcohol after one drink. I want to party all night. I want to carry on. Why? As time goes on, I had realized and learned that it's not me that wants to do that, the alcohol goes in and it sets my mind up like that. So I'm powerless over alcohol. The moment I have a drink, all bets are off. I'm now not in control of my senses. I'm not in control of, you know, what I'm doing now. Not physically or like, oh yeah, I'm like all over the place. No, but the alcohol has gone in and has disrupted my program. And now it wants to, it, it wants to party. It wants to have more and more and more and indulge in more. And just, there is no, there's no limit, right? Um, And that's something I only learned when I went to AA. Because for me, an alcoholic was someone sitting outside a street shop, stinking of alcohol, drinking, and not having even enough money to buy his Mm. next drink. But that's not an alcoholic. Mm. An alcoholic is a person that has a problem with alcohol. I think so a lot of people don't know that. Actually. A lot of people don't know yeah. that. And I learned that when mm-hmm. I went there. And I could I could go I could go three months without doing anything and then I'd go on a mad two day bender, right? Which would ruin everything. And it was not good. It was not good. And again, it comes to that same thing, consequences. You've got consequences, you've got family, you've got wife, you've got people to answer to. You can't do that. And it wasn't it wasn't that I wanted to do that. It was I was not in control of stopping myself from making it go that bad. I wish and I wish I could have one drink or two drinks and go, see you later, lads. I can't do it. Yeah, not exactly. So because I couldn't do it, I had to completely stop. Yes. And I have a three strike rule. I did it once in 2013. And that's why I say that this journey to get to where I am right now, where now I don't even think about it. I don't think about alcohol. I don't, it doesn't tempt me. You could be doing whatever you want in this room and I would just go, oh, I'm all good, thanks. Do Been you know, there, done it. I totally agree. There's one thing that, so I'm Punjabi myself yeah. and... We've all been brought up with alcohol. We've all seen I blame my dad drink. and my <laughs> granddad. Right, honestly, it's in my blood. It's, it's in the blood, honestly. <laughs> hey, all the dads drank, all the uh, Nanaji's drank, all yeah. of them. It was heavy drinking. Do you right? know it's funny? I'm sorry to interrupt <laughs> you, but it's reminded me of okay. something, right? About now that you brought up the, the family and yeah, everything yeah. and the bloodline. So I was having this conversation with somebody the other day, right? And I said, you know what? I really do blame my, my, my grandparents and my dad because they said, what do you mean? I said, well, they always said to me, Jira kama karna, chajinal karna. Yes. Do it, like, yeah. to the best that, of your ability. Yeah. So yeah. I party yeah. to the best of my ability. I was the, I was the, Enjoy your life yeah. I was the best rock star yeah. out there, right? Like, I went out there and I, 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 yeah. I, I, I did, did him proud. I exactly. partied for two days yeah. straight, yeah. right? But no, it's, it's like... It's been coming through them, like you know, yeah. through the bloodline, yeah. and like they drank, they did whatever they did. They drank did. hard. They drank it hard. Yeah. They encouraged the young men to drink, yeah. and it's almost did. like they will shame you yeah. if you don't drink. Yeah. But this is what. So I was talking to a lot of my mum friends who are also Punjabi, and they said 
the you know the fathers would encourage the sons so their husbands to drink yeah. then this then destroys the family at home and mm. the female is powerless to do anything because the elders have said drink mm. and this is what we do the women stay in the kitchen and the men drink and mm. this is the standard um division that we've seen with um you know men and women in mm. the south asian community mm. so my question is because you don't want to be ostracized from a group i can understand if i was a young man i would want to fit in i would want to have friends i yeah. would be part of the group i would want to be accepted like mm. what advice do you give to that young guy mm. um you know what i i i think you've just got to say to the, these youngsters is that there's plenty of time to drink and party and do all of that kind of stuff people that say oh you know your your teens and your 18 to 20 is the best time to party it's not because you hardly got any money to do it you want to do it you want to do it in style so work hard then and party later because if I, i that's one thing i also would say i mean i was quite fortunate that in the industry i mean everything was laid on right so we didn't have to pay okay. for it yeah. right so but if i was having to go out and like i mean look look at some people's instagram at the moment okay going out it's these posh five star restaurants and you know posh cars and posh labels and everything is branded right that costs a lot of money I don't think I couldn't afford that when I was their age, mm-hmm. 18 year. I'm looking at 18 year old kids I'm going, what are these kids doing to have that lifestyle at this age? All right, some of it might be fake, right? Which a lot of it is now because they have to try and get numbers and, you know, I'm going to get more likes if I open a box. They might be returning the next day for all we know, yeah. right? But they've got to live up to this certain thing and it's like first of all most I'd say to them that look, just focus on what your your goals are. Set yourself short-term goals. forget what else is going on outside i mean we with my kids we don't even let them have they haven't got my oldest daughter is 11 years old she doesn't have instagram yeah. she's not on any social media she only gets her phone on a friday and a saturday even and even now she's like she had exams she didn't even get a phone them so you know i think you should need to limit them to social media as much as you can when they're young young uh, as they get older is just try and like you know guide them to focus on becoming something first and then you can really have a good time yeah. in proper style and class where you can afford to do it and not be doing you know credit card loans and yeah. paying off these big debts and getting yourself into trouble Agreed. because that's what would happen so do we need to educate the dads then in all of this i think we just need to educate um a lot more about um how to manage um things better like i even look at the the schooling system and i think i i wish they would teach our kids how to manage money you know mm-hmm. finances Famous. and um you know like this whole all of these things that we talk about now like 20 years ago who even knew what those words were mm. trigger and i'm getting this and you'll get you know you're gaslighting what are the where like they've just happened now they are these so generated through social media right or like do you know what i mean it's like all of these things are happening now because um there's so much more uh pressure on p- kids and people because of social media yeah. you know so if we use that tool of social media to educate them as well and be you know from in positions where i mean i'm i'm going to do that on my youtube channel i'm going to talk about my journey i'm going to help people um go through what i went through um and and break it down and how and i'm doing that on my on my uh instagram like people are de- sending me dms when i share my journey like this many days sober like i've got apps on my phone i've got a smoking app i've got an alcohol app and it tells me how many days sober i am and i i open it every other, every now and again and when i get to another milestone i'll share that on my story and i'll get a influx of more messages from people that are going through tough times boys are raised not to talk about their feelings they're raised to be hard strong leaders um that really shouldn't cry boys and shouldn't cry boys yeah. shouldn't cry yeah you need to be strong um, yeah and, and now we're seeing on social media even more of an extreme of this you know you yeah. do have like i'm not going to say any names but you do have the extremists on that side um pushing quite toxic masculinity that's not good for the man mm. because you're still a human being yeah. you still have feelings you still have emotions you still have yeah. emotions you still, yeah. emotions. You still have trauma you're still struggling but now you don't have a toolbox to deal with the problem mm. so you're almost disadvantaging your son by not giving him the tools yeah. on how to talk so how do we as as a mom how do we prevent this from happening to our sons mm. um when they themselves the locker room chat is just so is is all about you know acquiring women and it's 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 very 
it's quite it's negative for the, from mm. the man's perspective. So yeah. how how do we change the language with our sons? I think you just got to be more open with them from the beginning. Yeah. Um, just just talk to them uh, very openly about things. And I I had this conversation with my daughter. Um, and I've got two daughters, my son's only four at the moment, but I had a conversation with my daughter, who's 11 years old, and I sat down one day, and I followed this, one of these um, gurus on um, Instagram, and he said this really beautiful, I, I've got it saved, and he said this really beautiful thing, and he said, um, um, he was having a conversation, and he was saying that um, when parents talk to their kids, sometimes they'll say, oh, tell me, you know, tell me what happened, tell me everything, and then, and then the kids will think, oh, they're just tricking me, they're trying to tell me, get me to tell them, and then they're going to have a go at me, so then they won't tell you. And he said, no, they're not. He goes, they're actually telling you because th your parent is your first port of um, defense in a way, right? To help you, defend you from the rest of the world because they're going to give you an honest opinion and honest feedback about what you're going through. So talk to them about whatever you want. So I didn't say anything to my daughter because sometimes when it comes from a parent, they still see it like that. So I sat her down and I said, Venice, come here a minute. I want to show you something. So I sat down and I played her the video first. So she watched the whole video. She saw it. She saw it coming from somebody else. Right, so she saw it and watched it and she went, wow, that was, that was amazing. And I went, right, so now just letting you know that after seeing that, you can talk to us about anything you like. Daddy, mummy, and I said, if there's something that you don't want to talk to me about, you might want to talk to your mum about it. I said, that's totally fine. I said, but if you feel comfortable, I said, you can talk to me about it as well. I said, and at no point will we ever, ever say to you that you're wrong for asking us. Or I said, you can ask us about anything, whatever you want, smoking. And I'm, you have to be, don't create it as a, bad thing mm. you know like once um, my neighbor was smoking she said daddy what's he doing and i said he's smoking and i said he's he's smoking i said she said what is that i said it's oh it's really bad for you i said it's it's a habit i said people that smoke have really bad lungs i said I come inside and my wife showed her uh, lungs of a person that doesn't smoke lungs she said which ones do you want she went oh damn ones she said oh then just don't smoke mm. and that was it it's not drumming it into oh don't do this don't do that you tell them don't do it they're gonna want to do it you show them the them. Show educate. them, educate them on it yeah. from the beginning, you know. Tell them that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to say no, even to my, even to me as your dad and your mum. If you don't want to do something, say no. Because you train your kids to always agree to things. What do you think they're going to do when they go out there? They're going to agree to everything that anyone tells them. Absolutely. Try this, mate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because they've not learned how to say no. Exactly. Because you never let them. Yeah. So that's what I think it comes from how you teach your kids at the beginning. Be their friend and, you know, like I, I even said to her sometimes, I said, look, I said, you, we're just your parents. We brought you into this world, right? You are there to educate us at the same time. We're learning how to parent, right? So sometimes you might teach us, that you might say something and it'll be like, oh, wow, Venice, I didn't know that. You've just taught me that. So don't think that you're, I'm any better than you are because we're here teaching each other. So don't be afraid to talk about anything. I said, because we might, you might just educate me on something that I didn't know. I completely and agree with that you. that way, they feel comfortable talking That's to you. Absolutely. Advice. So. Absolutely. Even talk about your own failures with them. Yeah. So I'm dyslexic. And the mm. first thing I'd say to my daughter is, if she struggled with anything, it's like, yeah. mummy has dyslexia. Mummy went from being the worst in the class to being number one. Yeah. But these are strategies mm. that I use. There you go. Yeah. And you can employ them. Yeah. But you're already miles ahead of me. But you. this, like what we're doing now, yeah. is we need to talk about these things Absolutely. more openly on social media so people exactly. start seeing this more. And this is because why that becomes, this, <laughs> this becomes, this becomes the norm. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. More and more people talk about positive things. People talk about positive mindset. Like, how do you have a good day? Wake up in the morning and tell yourself you're going to have a good day. Good day. Absolutely. You Change know? your mindset. Change your mindset. It's all about here, the power of the mind. And it's all about morning routine, doing things. Like, when I started my AA program, it was about getting up in the morning, meditating. Even if it's a minute, it might be, like, start small. Small steps, mm. right? In the right direction. Meditate. Do Bart. Gratitude list. And I did that religiously for months. I did, so when I started AA, I did 90 meetings in 90 days, all wow. over UK, right? All over, um, actually, I even, even went to as far as um, Kenya. I did uh, um, AA meetings in Kenya because I couldn't break my 90 day cycle. It's, it's like a, you have to, it's like, I'll give, I'll, I'll give you an example. When you're building a house, you have to have a strong foundation, right? If you haven't got a strong foundation, your house is gonna topple over. So in AA, 90 and 90 is like laying a strong foundation. Mm -hmm. If you lay a strong foundation, you're going to go far and you're, it's going to be very less likely that you're going to relapse. OK, so I did. I ended up doing about 98 meetings in 90 days. In some days I was doing two in a day. And what I would do, I'd wake up in the morning, 
And I'd go, right, I'd look at my list and say, right, where am I going to go today? Okay, I'm going to go to NWA, right? I'll go to that, that meeting, get ready, shower, get ready to go to this meeting, drive there, do that meeting and feel on top of the world. You walk out of that meeting, different person, different mindset, ready to go, you know? Um, and it was just having that great routine. And I'd come back from something quite mad, you know, in a really bad space where I was suicidal thoughts were in my head and I've got love life tattooed on my fingers. I don't want to, I don't want be having those thoughts but you can't control them when you're in that mindset when you're in a bad place you think of all the bad negative stuff right when you're in a good place you think how was i even there but it's just keep it's, uh, keep going back to it and i know i keep saying it but it's all about your mindset you know you did have suicidal thoughts what was it at that point when you were having these thoughts that was triggering you was it the pressures of the work your lifestyle what was it because I want, obviously, this we've created this platform where people can relate and so many people you're, you're inspiring. Yeah, yeah. And just on your just rewarding journey and what you're doing now to give back. Mm. What was it that was triggering you back then to so, have those well, dark, deep, you know, suicidal thoughts? I was I was drinking a lot. Um, I was using. I was I was in a in a very bad place. I'd, I'd been through a bit of a journey. It was, you know, I, I don't really like talking about it now because it was not a good place for me and I don't live there anymore and I don't like talking about it so much more because I've come so far from that. But it was all over social media. There was stuff that was um, that had happened in my, you know, in, in my personal life and in my work life, which um, the, the media had kind of blown out of proportion about, you know, um, uh, domestic violence and being arrested, which was untrue. There was certain things like, you know, I, I was partying and stuff like that. Um, and my wife wasn't happy about it. OK, um, let's let's cut to the chase um i was in big trouble um and we were in a bad place and she she was like you know what you're you're an ass you're an idiot right um so i had to come back from that and at that point when it was out there it was horrible you know because it was it was you know it was everywhere right and people were talking about it oh my god what's he done da, da, da. and i've been in the industry for 20 odd years and i've never done anything wrong and you know I'm not saying I haven't done anything wrong. I have done things wrong, but it was never in social media. It was never in the papers or anything like that, you know? So to deal with something like that, it was like, oh my God, my career's over. My career's over. You know, people had written me off and I was like, what the hell? So that was my low. That was, I, I'd hit rock bottom. So, you know, um, and some of the things that got me there were drinking and using and stuff like that. Anyone would think you'd stop doing that. I started doing it even more because I didn't know how to deal with it, what I was going through, you know? So I then, for about a month, I was in a really bad place. I was so, like, my head was gone and I was, like, doing even more than I'd ever done before. I was drinking because I just didn't want to, I didn't want to be here. Mentally, I didn't want to be here. I was like, what the, like, what have I done? What have I done? And I was wrong for some of the things that I did, you know? And, um, but I had to, I had to own up to it. I had to put my hands up and go, I messed up. Just acknowledge that you've done wrong. You've messed up. Now, correct yourself. Because yesterday's gone. How do we move forward? So it took me a while to get back into my AA plan and everything like that um, and call my sponsor because I've done it before. I, I've done, um, I went to AA in 2017 and I did a year. Um, but and there was a few little cracks appearing then. And then I thought, OK, I've done over a year now. Maybe I can have a drink. I was kind of testing myself. And I did. I had a couple of drinks without going out and going mad. Um, and then before you know it, boom, I'm back in the same place again. And I'm here. I'm in that place 10 times worse than I was the last time. And that's what happens in that cycle. It's very vicious. Um, so this time round, um, I, I had to put a stop to it because I've got kids that are growing up. Um, I've got two daughters. And I'm in my mid 40s now, right? And I've thought to myself, you know what? I did it once in 2013. I stopped for a year on self will. That was without, I didn't even know what AA was then. I just did that because I said, right, I just want to test myself. Can I do this? And I went to the, the, the Gurdwara, I bowed in front of the Maharaj Bid and said, God help me. And I stopped overnight, stopped doing, doing everything for a year. I thought, well, this, I can do this. So then it gave me confidence to kind of go back out again. Like, I celebrated my one year with a party. Like, what an idiot. <laughs> what what an idiot. You right? <laughs> what an idiot. But my friends flew out to India to party with me. Give so up, then. obviously, <clears throat> the alcohol, 
drugs, drink, everything, everything. Yeah. smoking, yeah. that's massive. It's like a complete new you. Complete new me. Like I can see your skin mm. is glowing. Mm. Your skin you is very great. good, I have to say. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> you got the right here, right? Thank you. Dr. Beast. Thank, yeah. you. Thank you very much. Thank but you. But it is. It's like you have completely reconditioned yeah. and transformed yourself. Yeah. And I pray that you continue yeah, on this no, journey. It's, it's all God's blessing. And I just feel, and it's amazing how, I know your wife and obviously Kieran and the kids personally, they've been an amazing support system to you as well. 100%. It's because of them. It's they, they are. Rocks. She, she's, she's, um, She's amazing. She's amazing. I, there's, there's, you know, um, I couldn't have done this without her. Yeah. You know, um, uh, she's a great wife. She's a great friend. She's a great mum. She's, she's brilliant. She's, she's she an, stood by she, you. She stood by me. In your you know. Rock. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It takes a lot of strength. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's got much more strength than I have. And yeah. she says to me, "How the hell do you stop like this and overnight?" And but it's because of the things that you have around you. You do it for, you know, like this time. It was my third time that I was, I was knocking it all on the head. But this time I did it for for me, because if Thank I'm in a good place, then I'm good for other people. If I do it for the wrong reasons, like the time before, I did it to um, I did it for my wife, I did it for my kids, I did it to get them back into my life and you know connect again. But then the moment you get them back, it's like you start easing back off your yeah. program, and then the first thing that falls apart is the thing that you did it for, yeah. you know? So you've got to do it for yourself. You've got to be honest with yourself first. Um, if you're honest with yourself and you become a good person from within yourself, then there's no there's no stopping you. Then, then like, like I said, now I can sit in a room and people can be drinking and doing whatever they want. It doesn't bother me. Did it doesn't bother me at all. Did people used to judge you if you said no to a drink? Not now, no, no. But, but now, you know, you're quite no. established. They couldn't judge me because I always drank. <laughs> <laughs> I would, He's a yeah, I, would, I would be the one. I tell you what, you you're know, judging others. I, I was, I was on a tour. Right, I'm not going to say who I was with, but I was on a tour in Kenya, and I went out, and a friend of mine owned a bar, and he invited us down. I said, "Listen, I don't drink, but I'll bring the boys down." I went there, got the bottle, and I poured drinks until that whole bottle was finished for everybody, and made them knock them in one. I said, "Come on, we do it, grab it," and I was drinking through them. Yes, and they were like. But you don't drink. I said, yeah, but why? You but you not fun. do, right? I said, you not do. So go on, I'm, yeah. I'm your barman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, I had so much fun. So much fun. It I love being a barman. It was yeah. brilliant. <laughs> and you have no hangover was, the next day. And I was day. so, so, and I was yeah, teetotal so brilliant. And even now, I was at a wedding just recently in India. I was there like three nights. Um, loads of other artists there. I was on the stage. I was doing chesties with the boys and doing all these dance moves. And like the people that didn't really know me that well, they're coming over. What do you want to have a drink? I'm going to the bar. I said, no, I don't drink. And they're like, what? What do you mean you don't drink? They're like, you're doing all this without alcohol. I said, yeah, I said, I don't need alcohol to have a good time. So you didn't pump yourself up. Like, how do you pump yourself up to get on stage? And Adrenaline, like, just, just adrenaline. Just, 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 I've got, it's, I just, that, I am, I can do it it's without anything. It's just my personality. Yeah, I get it. I'm an entertainer. electric yeah. energy. I'm an entertainer. Yeah. And I, I, I can put on a show without any, and even when I used to, um, even when I used to do shows and stuff like that, well, I mean, even now, but I'm going back to early days of our journey. Um, I think it was only in the first year or so that we would drink and party before we went on stage. Um, and I, I think once me, Jay and Rishi, we were out somewhere, we were drinking and stuff. And then we went out on stage and it was filmed, that one. And we watched it back and it was terrible. Was terrible? Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, oh my God. <laughs> we were slurring. Freaking hell are we, <laughs> we were talking crap. We weren't on point and it was, a re it was really bad, right? And we, Rishi pulled us up and we was like, lads we got to stop this this has got to stop because we're going to be short-lived otherwise and they're like look at how bad we looked and we're like we got away with it because everybody else was smashed as well <laughs> but they said this can't happen anymore now it's we go to the venue we do our show we leave we party somewhere else yeah. you know or when we finish our show we have one or two drinks and we leave respectfully so we leave a good impression and go and that's what we did and that's that, that's what I mean, having good people around you. Yeah. And that's, whenever I go to a show, when I was drinking even, I always say, well, buddy, what do you want? I said, just get me a Red Bull, some water, I have beers on ice when I get off stage. And that's when we were party. So I'd always go on stage sober. So some people like, like, oh, how do you go on? Because some people drink loads before they go on stage. They need it to, you know, a Dutch courage yeah. or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Um, but no, we, we, we got in early doors, we knocked that on the head and, it was just no focus. This is our job. Would you go to work so uh, drunk? No. So this is our work. Let's go to work. Let's do what we've got to do. Smash it. And then we can go and enjoy ourselves. 
Um, so now it's like water on ice after you finish it. Like literally, right? So now the funny thing is, it's like now he's like, you've been on a water diet as well. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do water fasts where I just drink water. Oh, you do drink the water? Yeah, just water. Three days. Yeah, some people get that. Sometimes, what do you mean you're doing a water fast? So you're not drinking water? I'm like, no, it's just water. Yeah, I did 88 hours. Is the last one I did was 88 hours on just water. Do you feel weak at the end of it? No, you feel amazing. You think that you will. Um, initially, but the, it's um, uh, I, I always pronounce it cr- uh, incorrectly autophagy or auto- yeah, 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 uh, yeah autophaging. Auto- right? yeah, auto- so, like, auto- eat, phaging, yeah, so right. basically eating all the dead skin, all dead scalp. Uh, so, cells that's what your body, body repairs yeah, yeah. itself basically after a certain period of time. Yeah, and you've gone through ketosis at this point, that's right. So, now you're also so you, become, fat. you become a fat burning machine, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I, I had um, a video shoot yeah. um, for. Uh, my next single, yeah. which is coming out at the end oh, of the month. Oh, I was just going to go into yeah. that. What is next? <laughs> yes. so spill the beans so, here. So, What's happening? Yeah. So, um, so like I mentioned earlier, that I've I've set up my own YouTube channel, and yes. we're working on um, um, really growing organically, growing the uh, Instagram with content and the YouTube channel. So you're which focusing is, on what in that YouTube channel? Is it mainly mental health? Music. Or is it music? No, no, no. no it's going to be everything. Okay. On my YouTube channel is all about generating hours of content, right? right. What is the content going to be? It's going to be new music. Right. It's going to be um, uh, my uh, journey, uh, which is going to uh, then, like I said before, um, my hopefully my journey will be somebody else's survival guide. So I want to talk about um, those kind of things. Um, positive mindset, positive look on life, how to, you know, come back from things. And that's what it's all about. It's about the comeback. You know, everybody loves a comeback story. You know, like now we're here sitting here talking about this. Is people going to be watching this game good for you mate yeah. you know and then some of them are going to be sitting there going how the fuck did he do that yeah, yeah. you know and they're going to burn more yeah. but you know like they say in Punjabi <laughs> let them carry on let them carry on you just stay focused do you know that you know? time when like cancel culture is rife and something really bad has happened this happens by the way to every influencer mm. something really bad happens you're about to go through cancel culture and you think you actually think you're going to die you mm. don't think you're going to survive you don't think you can breathe you don't even know if you're going to get through the next day Yeah. yeah. what would you say at that moment the first thing I'd say is don't don't be too hard on yourself. Take a deep breath. Relax. Chill. Don't be too hard on yourself. The thing that you've got to remember is you woke up today. You've got another chance to change the next 24 hours. So take it in the day. Live for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. So if today you can make a little bit of a change, you're heading in the right direction. And that straight away can make you go, oh yeah, you're right. Don't take on too much. Don't beat yourself up about what's happened. Everyone goes through crap. Everyone goes through problems. It's how you deal with them. Just relax. Take it one step at a time. Small doses, small goals. Set yourself small goals. And those small goals will, 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 you know, you'll you'll hit them. Because they're easy to get to. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I can relate to it completely, yeah. as you know, but I haven't been drinking for three weeks. Mm. And it is literally a mindset thing. You, it's all about willpower. You can go out. And you know, as you say, when we're at events, we just want to have a drink. We want to mm. relax. Mm. You know, it's our like, you know, downtime. But actually, I went from one week to two weeks. And now I'm on my third week, just because I'm on a healthy detox. And you can do it. You've just yeah. got to take it in baby steps. Mm. And you know, one thing I wanted to ask you, Chucky, is obviously in our industry, a lot of people pass a lot of judgment. Mm. And that can also be so much pressure on yourself. Mm. How do you overcome the judgment and actually not caring about what people think? Because oh. I know I'm guilty of it. Mm. You know, being in the industry, you're always worrying, what's this person going to think? What's that person going to think? When did that kind of transition happen for you? I, I, where you're like, I don't care anymore. Yeah, I didn't care from the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, I was around good people to say that. Like I said, my management said, don't read social media. Yeah. And it was just inbuilt. I don't care what anyone thinks. So you don't read anything on well, social media? Well, I do now, oh, but do. it doesn't affect me. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother you. No, but now what I do now, the way I do it now is um, I have control over that. And this is another very, very important thing. Stop worrying about things you can't control. Absolutely. Biggest thing that someone said to me, stop worrying about it. Can you control it? No. So stop worrying about it. What are you stressing for? Just focus on the things you can control. That's the biggest thing you've got is power over, is the things you can control. So focus on them. So what can I control? I can control that I can block somebody and I can delete them off my thing. And that is powerful in itself, that I have that power to stop you from watching or looking at what I'm doing. Block. But I will still help that guy. Of course. You know, because that's that's who I am and that's what I'm doing. I'm doing Siva. Now the way I look at it is I'm now doing Siva. I'm helping. Even if I can change one person's life, I've done, I've done, I've saved someone's life, you know. I've changed it and I've saved it. 
you know? So, uh, you know when so you said um, like people knock you down when you're down, they'd like to. Oh yeah, yeah they love that. Her. Love that. What is that? What I, I, like? What's the where's the mental space for that to even happen? If someone's down, what's the purpose of pushing them down further? Is it to make yourself feel better? Or oh is yeah, it, of course, yeah. yeah. Is but it, there's there's all sorts of people out there like that, isn't there? There's nasty people. There's good people. We've got a bit of everything. So you know, you've just got to realize that you're going to always find people like that. And like I say, it's like sometimes. <clears throat> we always say this about our music. When you when you put out a song, if you think you're gonna, everyone's gonna love it, you may as well not even put it out because you can't please everybody, mm. right? So don't think you're gonna do that and achieve that. Some people, you're gonna like it, you're gonna hate it. That's okay. I can't make everybody like what I do because if I did, I'd be the president of America mm. if I could make everybody like everything I do, right? Mm. So you've got to just accept the fact that as long as you're happy and you've done a good job and you've fulfilled what you were meant to do, put it out there and don't worry about what anyone else has got to say about it because the ones that are gonna like it will give you the good feedback. The ones that don't like it, they, they're entitled to their own opinion, but that's fine, you know? So we asked some of our followers some questions yeah. and these are the things that they wanted to know. Okay. So the first question is, um, who is your biggest role model and inspiration in your life? Um, you can give a couple. Yeah, there's loads. <laughs> there's loads. Um, I I probably would have to say it's my higher power. Wow. wow. Yeah. It's it's because I found it. That is that is my biggest inspiration, mm. is connecting and finding your higher power. And if you can connect and find a higher power, you can come back from anything. I totally agree with you. That's so powerful. Totally agree. That's it. So powerful. That is it. The and next, I found that. The next thing is, the next three the three people you'd like to give a shout out to who've been important to you in mm. your journey. Well, my wife straight away. Um, and my mum and dad. Aww. Yeah. So that's that's cute. Yeah. Mm. And who are you most looking forward to working with in the future or like to work with that you haven't had an opportunity to so far? Um... I've been very fortunate. I've worked with quite a lot of people. You have. <clears throat> I've worked with a lot of people. And I was just putting up stuff recently reminding um, the the new generation of the things that I've done. Because I've been around for 21 years. It was weird because I was recently at a um, college gig. And I was like, some of these people weren't even born when my first song came out. <laughs> it's, yeah. crazy. it's crazy. So I need to remind these people now by using this social media tool that I did songs with Ricky Martin and Craig David and I was on a song with Mary J Blige and Puff Daddy yeah. and uh, Timberland and uh, Missy Elliott you know and those were like those were not just remixes that we did ourselves those were official remixes I was on the the record that came out when their single was out and it says featuring Juggy D you know and that's a big thing like I'm one it's of huge. very few, well I don't think I'm not one of very few I'm I'm probably the only artist that has has worked with some of those people um as an indian yeah. as an indian urban desi artist i'm probably the only one that's done tracks with those artists absolutely um, and that's a blessing in itself so definitely i saw yeah. a really funny uh, thing on jay sean's um stories with his eight-year-old daughter mm. and um so jay sean's like showing her some of the music that he's that, that he's done and um it's going what do you think but not saying that he's sung the songs like his daughter didn't know the songs like it okay. was so long ago right? yeah so she's going yeah i like this tune i like this tune and he's like and then she goes hold on did you did you do this song mm. he goes yeah he goes oh no it's, no, it's not good dad it's not good <laughs> <laughs> i love it that's yeah. actually so you, cool. you <laughs> you play it to the girls, you play it to the kids. Do you know what? I, I do sometimes. I mean, they know my Sony Air and Dancing Sony, you and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't do it. I don't know, man. It's like, it's weird. It's like, I've never... See, when I come home, I switch off. Right. Yeah. It's not about Juggy D or... Well, I, like, if they ask me about it, then I'll talk about it. But I won't I won't make it, like... Um, You're just dad. Yeah, I'm just yeah. dad when it comes to home. Yeah. Yeah, so... Um, but yeah, now that they're getting older, like it's it's weird because it, it's my oldest daughter's in her last year of junior school, yeah. and so it's um, mine. Oh, oh, okay, it's stressful. so and and only in like the last year, her friends, um, the boys and girls, have found out that Venice's dad is this famous Big Indian deal. singer, yeah. right? <laughs> so they've all become fans now. And she came in the other day, came home, and she's like, "Daddy, look at this," and she pulled out pictures of me um, that they'd photocopied off the internet and. Um, they wanted me to sign them and stuff. And I was like... She's become so cool all, um, overnight. Yeah. And I'm like... And I ask her, but this is what I ask her. And I was like, 
I said, how do you feel about this? I said, are you okay with it? I said, do you, do it, because you need to know, like, are they embarrassed or anything? Mm. And she's like, no, she goes, it's really fun. That. Yeah, they she love goes, it. They love but, it. But, yeah. She's still young. But it's okay for her to say it. I don't want to make it out like, oh yeah, you should be so cool because like, you know, your dad's famous. No, I never make it out like that. She's proud. I, I just say, is it like, for example, like um, she's got her end of year, um, she's probably going to have a disco, right? So I said, now that all your like year knows and your teachers know and everything like that, I said, what about if I came in and did a couple of songs at your disco? I said, would you be okay with that? So I asked her first, I said, would you be okay with that? Because if you, if you are okay with it, I would be up for doing it. And she's like, oh, okay. So now I've left it in her court. I'm like, it's up to her if she wants her dad to come in and perform. That's just That's too so cool, sweet. though. I love That's that. That's too cool. I All love the that. other kids, for the rest of their lives, <laughs> be like, you're not going to guess who came up to our year six <laughs> disco. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I like for them. Hey, Does she want to be famous? Does she want to follow in your footsteps? I, I, you know what? I mean, I just push them to do whatever they want. Mm. Um, and um, <clears throat> she's a pianist. Both of my daughters are learning piano. She can. My older one can read music. Um, and uh, so she's doing, she's doing good in that. Um, and we just say to them, look, do whatever, just be the best at what you want to, you know, whatever you do, just, just be the best and whatever there's things that interest you, just let us know, we'll put you into it. And if you do well and you can carry it on or, Mm -hmm. you know, you just got to give them as much opportunity and and, as much, um, um, different things to try out, uh, because you don't know what they're going to be good at. So, um. Uh, but I think she will. She's she's a little drama queen. Um, she's a great actress. Yeah. Um, she she's she'll do something. Yeah. Um, and then you're connected. So if she says, "Daddy, I really want to do whatever," you'll be like, "Okay, I know the best, you know, help mm. person to help you in this particular." Yeah, she's we can, lucky. She's we lucky can give to her, stand on your shoulders. Her. Yeah, and that's what all children should do: mm. is learn something from their parents, stand mm. on their shoulders, and be better than we ever could have been. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's the aim, that's I think, great. for all yeah, the parents. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And last two, uh, share with us one thing no one knows about you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Other what we will share today. Okay. No, uh, this this is a good one actually. Okay. So, um, uh, aside from all the music, um, I've done a movie. Really? Yes, not many people know about that. Just oh, recently. Wow. Yes, yes, oh, yeah. Can you tell yeah. us about it? Uh, yeah, I can now a little bit. Um, the film's called Victor, um, and I play the lead villain in this film. Amazing. And it's a feature. It's a proper feature film, um, and it's got some actors, uh, some um, uh, actors from Mumbai, uh, from some big serials, um, and. Um, I am in that, um, and it's quite a big role. Wow! Yeah, so, yeah, let's yeah. know how we can support. And it's done. I will let you know. Yeah, yeah. and um, that coming out? It, it's coming out soon. I'm going to watch the trailer oh, this week. Um, uh, I, I I was a little bit initially, um, but the the guys that were working with me on it were phenomenal, and um, uh, they all gave me great positive feedback, uh, which made me feel really comfortable. Yeah. Um, and now I've had people randomly messaging me saying. Mate, I've just seen this trailer that you're in. Wow, amazing. Um, didn't know you'd be so good at acting. And I'm like, wow, really? Okay, now that I'm hearing it from third, yeah. a third person, because the director and the producer are going to say it because they chose me to be in that role and it worked out and we did it. And um, But now I'm getting other people saying it, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing it. So um, have you ever acted? Is this the first time? So look, so this is what yeah. I said. I said I'm not an actor, right? No. When they called me up and I, I said... <laughs> I said, um, yeah. so I said, I'm not, I'm not an actor. And they mm. said, yes, you are. And I went, what do you mean? They said, well, how many music videos have you done? They said, in those, you're so acting. True. Whenever you step on stage, you're acting, right? You're putting on an act. You're, you're putting on, you're a performer. Yeah. They said, don't worry about that. They said, we, we can see what we we want in, from you. We'll have, and I had an acting coach on set. Okay. I had a proper professional acting coach on set who was going through stuff with me. And after the second day, he said, Buddy, you don't need me. And I was like, no, 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 I do need you. Um, but it was it was good. It was really enjoyable. You're I loved in it. English or uh, so me? so my role is is really cool because um I'm bilingual. I mean I was I was given a lot of free reign on the script as well. So they would they would give me the script and say, right, these are the key points you need to get across. The rest do what you want. Mm. And I was like, wow, this is good. Okay. Right? So my um my um role is speaks English, Hindi and Punjabi in the film. Oh, wow. Yes. So I speak all three languages. I think you'd be such a good baddie. 
I think you definitely come across it. That's what you are. That's what he is. That's what you. Yeah, I think you definitely. And my name, my name is Jug. It's Juggy D, starring as Ranga. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, can't wait to watch that. And finally, what is when is the next single coming out? And if you could share, because all your fans are dying to know. So, um, the next single um, is a big one, and um, I'm really excited about it. It's coming out on my own YouTube channel, which is Juggy D TV. And it's Juggy D featuring Jay Sean, Rishi Rich, and Yash Navi. Oh, oh my God! Amazing. Reunion again! Back! I can't wait. This is what we've been waiting for. Yeah, we've been waiting for the done. reunion. The song's Come back. done. The video's done. Oh, We're amazing. currently just getting all the final bits together. Um, and I'll be announcing on my socials on Instagram, uh, which is if you're not following me, the real Juggy D. I'll be announcing the release date in the coming days. Definitely, oh, we will be promoting on all our channels as well. Thank you amazing. so much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Juggy, for coming and sharing your inspirational story. Honestly, thank I feel so emotional just seeing your transformation, oh, and I wish you. you nothing but thank you honestly very much. success. Thank you. Thank and you. before just a little snippet of any mm-hmm. song, mm-hmm. just for our fans, got we to. Like, Please, can oh. you do it for us? Okay. Okay. Yeah, let's see. Let's sort of um, sing for uh, obviously all the fans. Mm-mm. Okay. <laughs> So, um, I was thinking whether I was going to sing the, the new one. <laughs> If you can give a snippet, um, that would be amazing. Um, when does this come out? When does this come out? Whenever you want us to come out. <laughs> no. Oh, well, okay. Well, if it comes out later, yeah. then the, the song yeah. will be out. So, it'll yeah. be fine. So, so, okay. All right. So, um, it's... Um, oh, God. <laughs> I, I, don't know it. It. I don't know it well enough yet. Because there's three different parts. Yeah. There's three different singers on it, right? And it's this song... Funny enough, is in English, Hindi, no and way. Punjabi. Wow. Yeah, so oh, that's, that's so nice. good. So, so, so we'll leave that one. We'll do. We'll, okay, we'll do, do that one. one. We'll do another, another one. one. So, um. Um, Sohniye ni sohniye, o tere nahar man chana. Sohniye ni sohniye, ji karda na chana da. Balle 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 sohniye, ni sohniye, hai 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 hai. Yes, that's Thank always you. been my favorite. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you much. much. Thank really you. appreciate. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, Jaggi. My oh. pleasure. Don't forget to like, follow and subscribe and hit the notification bell because for one hour we will be in the comment section to answer your questions.